Large sections of the U.S. prepare for armed revolution. Hollow points of the DHS. And that virus on your computer. The Army now links to systematic covert operations on anyone who criticizes multinationals. The last Super Bowl was played right here. We're here for drone repair. Declared martial law. Daddy, what's martial law? This summer's apocalypse movies tap current fears, notes Elysium director Neil Blomkamp. His new blockbuster shows America as a third world state. He says this isn't science fiction, this is today, this is now. Two in three Americans now say the country's going the wrong direction. Half of them say it could require armed revolution. The New York Times notes America's prepping movement, people preparing for the worst, has now gone mainstream. Best-selling author Gerard Salente joins us. Thanks very much for coming on. You write the curtains coming down on half a century of U.S. dominance. Why do you say that? Fascism has come to America. I don't say that as an inflammatory statement. I use it as a statement of fact. The merger of state and corporate powers, by definition, is called fascism. And I could back up that fact with four simple words. Too big to fail. In capitalism, there is no too big to fail. So it's been a corporate takeover, a military industrial complex so big that if you just take out one underpinning of a too big to fail, the entire system collapses. They essentially called martial law a state of siege in Boston magnified that in a couple of cities going on at the same time. You're going to see the entire nation break down. As, as long as the United States keeps waging war, the chances of retaliatory attacks grow greater. Hey, there was another drone strike. <laughs> another war being fought. There's a Bronx saying that we used to have as I was a kid. Payback's a the United States can't win a war, whether it's Iraq or Afghanistan, whether it's Libya or whether it was Vietnam. So the people have lost faith in the military aspect of the government, the policing aspects of the government. And so they realize on the economic end that they're on their own. Only the too big to fail are there to be saved. Yeah, too big to fail banks. People don't realize by law, own your deposits. You know, when they need them, they take them. If you have your money in your own possession, you don't have your money. This is a fact. When 9-11 happened, I know this personally. I tried to get my money out of certificates of deposit, CDs. And I called up Fleet Bank. They're gone now. They fleet it away. I think City Group or one of them, Bank of America, bought them out. And I wanted my money transferred to my local bank. And they said, no, you can't get it. I got shafted by MF Global's scam when John Corzine brought down the company and they stole my money out of my segregated account. So the first thing is the golden rule. If you don't have any gold, you're not going to rule anything. You better have money, and in more than one denomination. And gold and silver is the popular denomination among neo-survivalists. If you were a Greek Cypriot, and they closed the banks for, what, almost two weeks, don't you wish you had some gold and silver to buy what you needed? That was the canary in the mine shift. America's canary has actually stopped singing, writes finance site Silver Bear. Your bank savings will be raided in the upcoming crash, quietly admits this new government document, which suggests the collapse will be much worse than in 2009. New rules by the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation reveals, quote, returning the sound operations of the globally active, systemically important financial institutions, that's the too big to fail banks, would be provided by converting unsecured debt from creditors. Converting unsecured debt is finance speak for taking regular savings. 
All this leaves Americans, warns former Wall Street banker Eve Smith, worse off than Cyprus. Canaries and coal mines are a popular analogy at the moment. Target Health says it's the bees. Either we stop the systematic poisoning or there will be war, writes investigative website Stool Relic. This is what your grocery store looks like if bees die out, as only they can pollinate much of our food. Nine in ten bees in the States have already died. Corporate and industry paid media issued denials, but independent scientists have told the Daily Mail that only new pesticides could have killed over 10 million bees instantly, as happened in Florida. Here, beekeeper Charles Smith of the Smith Family Honey Company points to some of the millions who have suddenly dropped dead. Story League editor Anthony Gucciardi's investigated the corporations behind these chemicals. Thanks very much for coming on. You write, it's them or us. Right, exactly. The, the bee scenario could potentially spawn World War III, and it could also potentially spawn a massive economic collapse and starvation. And that's not an exaggeration. We've read reports time and time again where these diplomats go in and say, U.S., you have to stop approving these pesticides. And the reason for that is that America, the United States, refuses to stop using these neocontinoid pesticides in its food supply killing all of the bees, and then also, yes, it's exporting over to other countries. What's interesting here is that it shows the United States government is so owned by these major chemical corporations like DuPont and others that they would rather fund them with millions upon billions of dollars in these neocontinoid pesticide sales than actually care about the bees. Monsanto knows it's killing the bees, and that's why it bought one of the major bee research firms, Bee Logics. If we allow the corrupt officials inside the United States government that no longer represent us, if they don't stop, and if they destroy the bee population inside the U.S., we're looking at some form of a collapse of the food supply and an economic collapse as well. So other nations actually have to come in and say, U.S., stop killing your own country. They have to come in and speak for us. Other nations are speaking more for the United States population than the United States government itself. Yeah, what's the future if these corporations keep control? The biotech corporations are already on to the next phase, which is something called biopharmaceutical crops, where they actually have in, uh, vaccines and pharmaceutical components already made inside the crops. But now you're actually getting pharmaceutical drugs on your dinner table, experimental vaccines on your dinner table. But the FDA also will likely not label these uh, vaccine component crops and these pharmaceutical component crops to the point where you'll be feeding your family unknowingly all of these different vaccines and, and statins and everything like that, even for infants, GlaxoSmithKline, Monsanto, and Merck. The vaccine industry, the pharmaceutical industry, and the biotech industry all coming together to deceive you on what's on your dinner table coming together to make massive profits completely unheard of in this country. For example, we have the AIDS vaccine, which they're now looking to infuse into these biopharmaceutical crops, which will be on your day, uh, dinner table. There were 19 participants in this experimental AIDS vaccine study, and actually three died from adverse reactions to the AIDS vaccine. Of 19 people, three died. And this is what they want to put into your food supply. Yes, yeah, things have got this bad, why aren't people complaining? That can be considered under Homeland Security an act of terrorism. If you have a complaint about your tap water, if you're concerned about the chemical contamination of it, the fluoride in the water, you're a terrorist, and you're going to be put on a terrorist watch list. First, they came for Qaeda, right? They came for Al-Qaeda after 9-11. Oh, Al-Qaeda are the bad guys. We need to go and get Al-Qaeda. Then they came for the extremists, the left-wing, right-wing extremists, whatever. The extremists are the bad guys. Now it's you. Under this report, anyone that says they don't want GMOs in their food or, hey, hey, does this have GMOs in it? Got to be a terrorist. Polls show that about 96% of the country wants GMOs labeled and are against GMOs. So, in fact, 96% of the country now are terrorists. If you complain about Monsanto's GMOs, it's been linked to massive tumors in rats to where they couldn't even move. If you're a suspect, expect punishment such as computer viruses. Sustainable Pulse reports two days before he was due to make a presentation on Monsanto's pesticides. A bizarre virus completely disabled Adrian Bepp's computer. But the government now feels so above the constitution and any laws, it doesn't cover its tracks. 
IP log searches found computers of Monsanto critics accessed by the US Army Intelligence Center. WikiLeaks shows Obama administration agencies now conduct illegal black ops for multinationals. Let's speak to Dr. Kevin Barrett, author of Questioning the War on Terror. Great to talk to you. If 96% of the population are now the bad guys, how will this all end? The U.S., like so many other places, is quite corrupt. In some ways, even more corrupt than most places. Uh, and it's just better concealed, or it traditionally has been. Uh, but it's, it's all crawling out from under the rock now. The Internet has really ripped off the veil and shown what's, uh, what's going on at the highest levels of power in the U.S. And they openly turned their guns against the American people. And now they have a, a military command that's aimed at the U.S. in blatant violation of posse comitatus that says that the U.S. military cannot be used in the U.S. against American citizens. That's been thrown out the window now. And they're openly militarizing the police, having the police work with the U.S. military in violation of posse comitatus. And they appear to be getting ready for some kind of civil war, some kind of to intern people. We're in a really dangerous time here in the U.S. The guns of the military are now turned against the American people in a way that just never happened before in history. And these hollow point bullets are illegal to use in warfare. And yet DHS wants these huge numbers of them. You know, they have more than enough to kill off the entire population several times. The hollow point expands on impact to almost three times its size. The expanding effect means that the bullet dumps its power inside the body, damaging more tissue. A larger wound means a greater chance of hitting an organ, cutting nerves, or severing an artery. It's, it's quite worrisome. I know a lot of people who are getting out of the U.S., uh, and maybe they're the smart ones. Nationwide protests, hunger strikes, and sit-ins are currently sweeping the United States, notes the website Popular Resistance. But with a corporate media blackout of any news that threatens their paymasters, a more realistic portrait of America today may be at the cinema. This is The Truth Seeker.